she knew I actually manufactured, which is a better solution, a special arm that you can replace that allows you to get up to two and what you have, two point two point six of negative. And the benefit of this also is if you drop the car, the it keeps the tie rods level, which eliminates a condition that's called bump steer. That when you hit a bump with a lowered car, the wheels actually, because the steering rack is no longer on the center with the arms, tends to uh, adjust the steering. So, so that's that's the benefit of that. When you're doing camber, floors are not level. So what you want to do is, is devise a way of, if you're going to index a gauge, doing it off of a relatively flat surface. What I use is nothing more than, this is a regular carpenter's level, and instead of using the whole level on the floor, I just have two of these are caps off of oil cans. And the reason why is because floors are wavy, and this way the level will always stick, and I do nothing more than and line it up off the back wheel here. Now all I'm trying to do is average the angle right now that the car is sitting on. And then all I do is I, I turn the gauge on, and then cal there's a, just a button to calibrate. You take one calibration, second, and put it in it, and this rear wheel has about four tenths of one degree negative camber. The front wheel, if you just look from the back, has about 2.6 degrees of negative. Now, another way of doing that, there's two other ways. If you don't have a camber gauge, another way you can take is just a, a regular carpenter's level. It's almost a two-person job unless you have a way of having the level sit. Then all you would do is take a, a vernier caliper, they're relatively inexpensive, take them, zero the caliper in the bottom of the rim, then take and put it on the top of the rim. The measurement on here, this one was, a, I think, a glass 178, you can take, and if you look on that chart, for every five thousandths of an inch is a minute. So you have four tenths of a degree in this car. Four, to, four tenths of a degree is what we had um, camera. And if you just take in minutes, and on a 17 inch wheel, you'll see it's five thousandths. And you just divide five thousandths uh, by that, and it'll come out to. Uh, about 24 minutes, and 24 minutes is four tenths of a degree. So you can actually do it mathematically also. Are, are these inches? Yes, those are in thousands. And this is minutes. Minutes are 60 minutes to a degree, and the other one is percentages of degree. So you can see, give you an example, if you go to 30 minutes, that's one half of a degree. Okay. So now that's basically how you measure camera. You have to devise some way to measure the difference in the dimension or the angle on it. And, and the key, again, is doing it off of some type of calibrated surface. The floor doesn't have to be level. If you did the camber on the other side, you would take, put this over on the other side, recalibrate the gauge because it will be different because the car could be on a slope like this and you'll get an accurate reading because again, you're reading off of the surface that the car is sitting on. Any questions on that? Okay. Yeah. For smaller wheels, is it linear? Can you extrapolate them? Probably, yeah. This goes from... Is there a wheel diameter? Across the top of the, that sheet is wheel diameter? Yeah. So is it smaller than the smallest wheel size that's on there? Yeah. Oh yeah, okay. So you can do that. It's right. just trigonometry too. You yeah. Use an Excel spreadsheet and use a formula to come up with that exact same thing. Well, it's really Yeah. Yeah, it's probably yeah. Yeah. That's just a trigonometry. So so that's that's how you measure camber. Now how you measure toe is what you have to do is devise a way to measure the difference 
in this dimension here. We want to know how much closer or further apart the front of the wheels are than the back. What this is, is a very simple device that we're actually going to probably have somebody manufacture. I bought this in 1987. They don't make them anymore. And it's a tow gauge. It's just nothing more than two pieces of steel, it telescopes, it's got a, a little uh, thumb nut here. It's got a plate, you put a piece of tape on it, and you, you put this on the front and the back of the rim, and we're going to put a, 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 a pencil mark on each one, and you measure the difference, and that gives us our total. Very simple, very repeatable, and it's just a direct mechanical measurement. All alignment machines, everything else, I mean, basically give you the same thing. It's just a matter of how they derive at it. If you're measuring toe, it's best to be able to do it off the rim. You know, you'll see things if you go online and measure off of tires, toe gauges off of tires. You get a lot of deflection. If you really want to be accurate, you really have to do it off the rim. So you need to devise a way of, of doing that. And how this works, maybe you can hand the same. Grab it. And this takes about 20 seconds. You just do, now that he's going to put that, he's going to hold that on the edge of the rim. And you can do it by yourself. Are you on? Yeah. And then you do nothing more. Right at the edge, I put a little line. This car has a ton of tool on it. Okay, this dimension here is the total toe in. Then you can take, now this rim, what diameter is this rim? 16 inches. Okay, one tricky thing when you're looking at that chart, a 16 inch rim you use 17. Because the tire diameter is 16, but you're measuring off the outside diameter of the rim, which is actually larger. So that's just a little thing to remember is always add an inch to whatever rim because, you know, when you think of 16, that is an actual dimension, not a tire size. So, that, so then what I do here is I can do nothing more than take your vernier calipers and you measure the difference in the lines. And in this case, it's 245 thousandths of an inch or 6.23 millimeters. Now, for a Lotus, and for most cars, about an eighth of an inch or three millimeters is optimum in the back. You can play with less, some guys like a little more. The problem with going with too much toe like this is what happens with extreme toe, number one, the cars will get loose because the tires lose traction, they're scrubbing constantly. You get bad tire wear, also it cuts speed a lot. You lose a lot of, on a track, toe really slows the car down because the tires are going sideways, especially Blend's car has got this much toe too. I mean, it's amazing how fast it is. And this thing is has got way too much. That's not something. <laughs> it's not. So, it, it does have stability though, probably. Really. If we looked at this again, at 245 thousandths uh, of an inch of toe, if you just take on this chart and you go, Right down under 17 to 245. Okay, we got 245 thousandths toe. At 242, we're 49 minutes of toe, or 0.81 degrees is how much toe. I don't know what the specs are on these, but my gut is it should be around 24, 25 minutes. You know, that, that I, I don't know if you know what they say on, on spec on, on this car. But